One and peeps, we made it through another week. We are back for the live review of Power Raising Canaan, book three, episode nine. These some grimy folks in this show, ladies and gentlemen. These some grimy, grimy people in this oh, show. Boy. But let me just say that the people on this panel ain't grimy. We lovable. We likable characters. Over there, you got the big homie, Larry, the living legend. Down there, you got the Ari Muchella. And down there, you got the, the my favorite Nita, who is a diva, Nita. Hey. <laughs> and sooner or later, we'll have the comedian, J-Mo. He's going to pop in here. He always comes passionately late. <laughs> Y'all ready to do this on a Monday? Yep. Yep. All right. <laughs> We're going to start this thing out with good old Lamont Tyson style with a, with a trailer, something to watch. Let's take a look at this. The same one I did yesterday on my review. So what, uh, he's some kind of girl faggot? Lebanese or some shit? Shit comes from your moms. Your family got all the fuckers and heathens and shit. What does that mean for you and God then? Because you ain't nothing but a violation, Bob. <laughs> Just because you think you a nigga don't mean you can fight like one. Mm, 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 mm. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, that was bad. He was out that of control. That was horrible. That was horrible. That was he was out of control. Mm -hmm. That was just downright horrible. And we'll get there. But that was kind of the essence of this particular episode. Everybody doing some craziness. So, Larry, I'm going to come to you first with the opening. So, they start out with the same person we just saw, Mr. Marvin. Supposed to be taking care of Unique on his own grounds. And he rolls up. We see Unique roll out with his kid. Marvin shoots up the place, but nobody dies. Unique's got the bulletproof car. Larry, speak on it. This whole move right here, it was just such a... It was just, for lack of a better phrase, it was just a straight bitch move. It's the like, that, that's one of those reasons why people, <laughs> you know, they, they talk about people having certain codes and they talk about no women, no children. This dude straight up went after this man with his baby in the car. This was just a bitch move. I mean, you could have waited. You could have followed him. You could have done some recon. You could have found this dude at a different time. It's not like everybody in this in this whole show doesn't know where everybody lives. They know where they they know where they sleep. They know where they eat. They know where they party. They know where their girls live. You know where they shop. Everything, and you're gonna wait till this dude's got his baby with him. That's just a bitch move. This whole show was nothing but a, the writers with a whole bunch of bitch moves. I just. It was this whole this whole episode was just disgusting and man I'm done with this show. I'll be honest with you. They, it was it was this it was it was to a absolute new low. Just a a, a horrifically new low this whole episode. Mm. Muchella, jump on in there, open and scene, talk about it. How you shoot like that and you only hit one person? Right. That part. You only hit one person. You ask that me, Cherokee, you tore, he tore up. You, he if tore you ask up the me, Cherokee. You ask me, I'm going to tell you how he do that because the whole Stark family is an F up. But go ahead. Uh, I, I just, oh. It was <laughs> foul as it was. With this, you brought the demon out of me. It, this whole thing with him shooting in the kid, mm -hmm. that brought the demon out of dude. So we got to see if he's going to actually catch Marvin because he saw him. He was yeah, he right did. in his face. Mm -hmm. I want to know, do I, do y'all think he's going to catch Marvin by himself? Because he usually be, he don't really be running with bodyguards or nothing like that. And they don't, they don't, they have like a skeleton crew. All right. They probably get him. I don't know. It's definitely ain't going to be this season, but I mean, Marvin, Marvin has got a couple of bull's eyes on him. You mm -hmm. need his daughter. Mm -hmm. um, it's gonna be a lot of Tony. Yep, Tony. So, and he ain't smart enough to get out of this stuff. He's about to be in some trouble. Neither the diva down there showing more wares than an appliance salesman. Talk <laughs> to us, my sisters. 
this was this was just bad. This is just one of those things that you know you keep getting so super frustrated with Marvin and the way he moves and stuff like that. Um, oh my goodness! Like Moochie said, hit one person. And I'm trying to figure out what is going on. He coming out like the Black Rambo and <laughs> one person. Now, Rambo. now, 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 correct me if I'm wrong. Unique is the only one with a bulletproof car, right? Yep. All them dudes and you hit one. It was just like, it was, it was just unbelievable. And I, you know, I just hate that the baby was a target. And that leads on to later on where, you know, he talking about women, children, old people. It don't even matter because the gloves are off now. And so when you get grimy, they people be taking it down to the floor. They take it down to hell. And that's where we at with this. They are at war. Mm. I just want to see what's going to happen with the get back. Uh, it's going right. To, I mean, if, if, if they, the right I'm, I'm, I'm going to be up for it. If the writers done went this far with it, I'm sure the get back gonna be even. Oh, they definitely. gonna take the elevator down first. Uh, <laughs> J Mo, jump on in there, my brother. Ladies and gentlemen, what the up, comedian known as J Mo, he's what in hot. the building. Thank you, thank you. And your Chicago Bears got a dub this weekend. Hey, you know I was about to kick it off first. Take that hat off. Use it to wipe your tears. It's okay, <laughs> bro. Take that damn hat off. I told you that fish out of water. You know a goldfish don't <laughs> last long when you get it from Walmart. It only gonna last a week. You had your week last week. The goldfish <laughs> died, baby. It's okay, man. Larry, look, uh, look, man, and we lost my quarterback. And by the way, dolphins are not fish; they're mammals. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> they live in the water. <laughs> Larry, you you at least you consistent. You you in rare form already, but you consistent. I give you credit for that. <laughs> Gucci, I don't want to see the demons, and I do want to see where is we going tonight after this show. Need to, damn, I'm definitely a uh, dress appropriately. Oh, I'm just trying to bring the the, the boys to the yard. That's all. I, I oh. see. <laughs> trying to get my subscribers up. I hey, they, 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 they know. I know they waiting to find out what yard it is. They ready. You ain't lying. <laughs> you better watch out before your yard be full of boys. As far as this scene goes, yeah, I loved it. I mean, this reminds me of uh, Marvin came through like, hey, my name is Marvin. And you go Mentoya. You tried to kill my brother. Prepared to die. He ain't got no time for morals or bitch moves or we cool. All that's out the window. You tried to kill my brother, burn up his house. You didn't shot up my nephew from the get go. You didn't all came at the family. And he the older brother. Like he told Rock later in the show, I'm going to protect my family. Now, did he do it right and succeed? No. But that's where he at. Like, man, to hell with y'all. When the friend friendship is over, the, the the nice courtships that we saw, the meetings in the beginning of the show, that's out the window. You tried to take my family out. You tried to kill my brother. Mm -hmm. That's over. If anybody on here got a brother or sister and somebody tried to kill him, you still trying to go oh, by wait, rule? If yeah, I get what you're family. saying. Yeah. I get it. You but you got to do better, though. You got to no, do better. I disagree. You got to succeed. If you're a gangster killer, Larry, if you're a gangster killer, not Larry, but if you're a gangster killer and that's your life and somebody tried to kill your sister, you're going to be still trying to have meetings? There's No, no, it's not about having meetings, but there's rules to it. When, we, when we're talking about when he tried to go out after and kill uh, Lulu, Lulu's in the game. Lulu's right. a hitter. Lulu is their organization's hitter. And they went after him, they missed, and then they, you know, so it's one thing when you're going after another organization's hitter. It's another thing when you go after dude when he's got his baby in the car. But they Come also on, went after, they also went after Kanan Stark, though. It wasn't even like you didn't know he's the kid in the car. He could have just he said, you know, he's got a kid with him. If you're going to take it there, Larry, he they shot at Kanan first. Thank you. Thank you. He shot at Kanan first. Oh, they, 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 they shot the you house. They shot their family Kanan's home. Kanan's in the game, and Kanan did a murder on this one is of his dudes. He was in it like that. But listen, you remember with Snowfall when um 
crazy boy um daughter got shot same yeah. difference. Yeah. same difference that's right man. In the game. i don't remember that you got you don't remember uh, when, when, when our girl shot, went crazy and, and, and cut up fat exactly back because her daughter got killed Me, uh you what is uh, that? scully's daughter got killed is that uh, right old girl went and did it i mean what they call it in uh the military uh right collateral damage, collateral yeah. damage. that was right but that was an accident and dude felt That's horrible about damage. that because he didn't mean to do that he didn't you mean to kill he didn't know there was a little girl family. in the car but you ain't take it easy on him though nope he didn't what are you talking it, about? I said through that whole show that that dude was 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 walking around murdering people. I didn't feel bad for him at all when stuff you happened. You said you didn't but feel the, bad for Scully. Wow, well, I, I didn't feel I bad for either one that. of them. But I'm gonna say this: I don't feel bad about this because, like, what Marvin's he's not the Italian mob. No women, no kids. He like man, the hell with all of y'all, man. He just probably smoked or tooted up a little something. Had Robert Harris driving the getaway van. Come on, man, smile. And then tried to tear their ass up. <laughs> well, I will say this, and then we'll move on. Larry, part of the issue here is what we always hark back to. The parents are in the game. And when the parents in the game, by your behavior, everything that surrounds you becomes collateral damage. Kids, yep. everything. Home. By, the, by just merely the parents being in the game. Not that we like it. You act like they playing the game. a game where it's like, time out. He got his kids with him. Right. They're not going to do all of that. I how, did they know, how did they know it was no kids in Lulu house? They didn't go in and check. They just shot it up and threw some stuff and burned it in. Oh. Jessica could have been in there. Anybody could have been in there. I understand that. I understand that um, that with Kanan, they would go after Kanan because Kanan's in the game. Kanan went and shot Buck 50. So I get it that that he would have or buck twenty, excuse me. He I understand he would have gone after them because he's fair game at that point. He's in the game. He's already doing hits. But with with Lulu's girl, yeah, she could have been in there and maybe she would have got burned up. I don't know. Just like Lulu went after dude when his girl was in there, he didn't go. He didn't intentionally try and shoot his girl. But if she got clipped, yeah, she's in the game too because she is there with this dude who she knows is in the game. You don't try and go after him, but if it happens, it happens. But the little baby, I mean, you know, you don't go after little. the dude when the little baby's there. At that point, you say, you know what? Let's wait. It's not going to, it doesn't matter if it happens right now at, at, at 12 p.m. or later on today at 4 p.m. We can make it happen later. Yeah, this ain't good, fellas, man. Yep. We'll move on. It's to the good, next fellas. It's bitch, fellas. Because he did, it was a bitch move what he did. Hey, man. Nobody said it was a pretty way of life. Yeah. Well, I just, I just pretty. hate that. I, I hate that these shows are constantly celebrating and glorifying the lowest common denominator of our community. It's horrible. I don't think it's celebration. I just think it's an accurate depiction of things that went on during that time. It's not necessarily celebrating. Like, hey, where's a round of applause for trying to take out a man and his kids or a drug? I just think it's an accurate depiction of how drug wars and things went on during that time. It was ugly. It was unfortunate. It's a story. A lot of people wouldn't get to see this type of story um, without it being on TV. We see that the mob, Goodfellas and the Untouchables and all of that is on TV. You don't yeah. see people saying, why did they depict that horrible side of exactly. opportunity? It's a true it, story. It happened. Different stuff happened. You know, Casino. Why they the mob? Why did they got to talk about how we did it? We built Vegas, huh? It wouldn't even have a place to lose your money without us, huh? Mm -hmm. They don't do that. Then, uh -huh. like, uh, that thing with Scully and them, like, he was, you know, having to do what he had to do, but he kept telling Khadijah, you got to get that he about your whore. <laughs> well, <laughs> it, abundance, abundance hit it on the head. If you, if you don't want this stuff to be glorified at some point in time, you got to start watching it. That's true. What is that? And, I, and, I, and, I, and I said, I'm done. This is this is my last thing. I'm done with this. You ain't watching BMF? <laughs> I feel like I, it's I, told I, as a cautionary tale, though. I can see it as some people learn positive things from negative actions. You know, yep. I, I feel like it's I, told I as a cautionary can, tale. Not to be glorified. I believe that some... I'm sorry, Mooch. Go ahead. I said, I feel that it's told as a cautionary tale not to be glorified. Yeah, how many people that saying they don't want to see it watch Billions or Secession 
or work in progress. I don't think billions. I don't think billions is anywhere in the same category as this at it's all. It's not. That's what I'm saying. They say they don't want to see this, but they don't watch the other stuff. So what they doing? They gonna come back to it. Like y'all need to watch. I mean, other if this is what we're gonna keep on forcing right. people into, I mean, on some level, when you when you force when you continue to feed it to them, then they're gonna continue to eat it. If you give them something else to eat, they'll they'll eat it. They'll. I mean, at some point, they'll think they're eating their vegetables, and then they'll realize, hey, I like them. They're good. You know, mm. they make me feel good. They're better for me. This stuff is just trash. It's it's just like it's eating. It's, at first, you comes off like you're eating candy. The next thing you know, you have a stomach ache. The next thing you know, your teeth are falling out. It's bad for you. It corrupts you on the inside. This stuff is not good. And, we, and they keep trying to give it. They keep feeding it to us. And I, I, I like I said, I can't do it anymore. It's just I don't want to support this garbage. I mean, they, they, they took it way, way too far. And I'm and I'm out. All right, Larry X. <laughs> All right, Moose. We own you I now. I feel you, man. I diversify. People should diversify, boy. You shouldn't have only a list of the shy and this stuff is all you watch. Watch more stuff. Hmm. I know you do. I'm just saying. Uh, most of us do. But you all should watch. Everybody should, you know. Yeah, Mooch. Now, what'd you think about this? Your boy done rolled up at the hospital. Just happens to be smoking a cigarette. And Miles say he looks horrible. Whoever's doing his makeup and stuff to make him look sick, mm -hmm. they're doing it on point because he looks bad. Yeah. And while he's there, he just happened to see these cameo Negroes. Just, you know, we we just going to come to the hospital, hang out a little bit. And then next thing you know, a bag of money is exchanged with this chick, who I guess is a um, health desk coordinator. They up in the hospital pushing carts and like i told my wife in the 90s you never seen two black dudes who had this type of style appeal in them hospital i worked in the hospital in and, new york oh you had it in new york like yeah that? We ain't remember i had my son in 91 so we did we did not have it in north carolina i can tell you that and i worked in four <laughs> hospitals <laughs> if you ain't see you if you saw two brothers together so what somebody was in trouble right and especially that out, air yeah, they get on with it, Moochie, and come to find out they was trying to put a heel on Lulu's life, mm -hmm. break down this scene, talk about it. Now, he saw everything. Everything. And, okay, how far can I go? You want me to just stop it when they get caught? No, I mean, anybody's free to jump around. All right, but with this whole thing, they had a little plan going, but if he didn't see this, they probably would have got away with it. Because... Right. When you when you watch them walk towards the room, the bodyguards is in the waiting room watching TV. Yeah, like what the hell they was they doing? They should have been standing outside. <laughs> right. They should have been standing what outside. Doing? What the hell was they doing? Watching TV. They should have been standing right here. outside, posted up in front of the hospital. So that way, if they would have came, they would have just kept going. Mm. Or oh, sitting right. in the hey. room watching TV. Look, that and too. the nurse, the nurse had the, the security guard, you know. Yeah, her. the nurse, the, the, the nurse was down yeah. with it too, so she distracted the um the police officer exactly. that was by his room. I was like, oof. Now I'm gonna come to you, Nita. Is any of them other people gonna get arrested? I mean, that was a chain of crooks in this whole thing, from the health desk coordinator to the she nurse. She got arrested. Yeah, they, they got, arrested. Arrested. They they got arrested, and the two flat tops got arrested. Flat tops. <laughs> okay. All right, go ahead, Nita. And, you know, just for GP, I think that move right there could have bought Howard some, some grace, a little bit of time or something, because he really did look out in that situation. I'm like, mm. yeah. And yeah, so she, she, yeah, she, you know, last night I said that she made the right move. I think in the long run, she probably did, but I was just like, he really looked out for you. He looked out for her on numerous occasions. And, but, you know, she it, didn't even say thank you. Right, right. I was like, damn, she didn't even say thank you. Right. Well, thank you. You saved my brother's life. Yeah, yeah. I like, was just like, like, I want to know what he did for her to hate him the way she hates him. Right. It's yeah. more to it than her getting pregnant and all of that. I know she he probably took the whole crew down, but she worried about her reputation. 
Yeah, exactly. That's She's worried about being exposed for, for, yeah. for having a cop, a baby with a cop. And one mm -hmm. Rico, he was sometimes those be the best aces. She don't even know. <laughs> Jump on in there, Jay. What you got to say? Anywho. <laughs> this scene was interesting TV, but I think it was just a little too convenient that he just happened to be there. They just happened to be right in front of him, just making this exchange in broad daylight. So obvious. Uh, he was looking real sickly. He was looking like a black white walker up in this piece. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey. yeah, he looked like a white walker in this piece, boy. He was. He wasn't looking good. He probably was looking sick. <laughs> Uh, Blotchy MCU, he was right. auditioning to be in the blade, That's what <laughs> blade <doing. laughs> right? One of the vamps. Uh, but uh, I think that was all a little too convenient, but you know, it was obvious. You see this dude coming in with the uh, father MC, uh, you know, what I'm saying Gumby step the slope, ski slope. I mean, he didn't need the elevator, he came with the steps already in that uh, box he had. <laughs> Um, but uh, you know, they already had uh, the, the nurse. Why they just didn't have her go and put bubbles in his IV? Now you're dead, it's untraceable, <laughs> and it wouldn't have been no gunshots and obvious. And as soon as he gets shot, now it's uh, you know, flat line, and then everybody noticed. And these two trying to get away, you could have just had you know. Oh, girl, put some bubbles in his IV, uh, you know what I'm saying? Give him a little dose of easy e and, uh, you know, be on your way. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. See, they wow. already had her put it to use. They got her coming out in the damn uh, parking lot in front of everybody, giving them some scrubs. I mean, they couldn't have bought some scrubs at the store themselves, give them the ID. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> it was good TV, but I think it was bad right and on how it kind of played off but i guess if they did it the way i'm thinking then lulu would be dead so yeah and uh that's why you can't have certain negroes from the hood playing in security because they sitting there watching tv they ain't even doing their job man y'all need to be on job right now <laughs> y'all watching uh Dada you and y'all need to get on the job man so larry speak on it but before you go let me say we've got 300 within 22 minutes good god almighty y'all love this show <laughs> be sure all 300 of y'all give me a like share me subscribe to everybody's channel everybody has a link up here and i've even got a second channel life gains financial channel telling you guys how to make those moves in the stock market real estate and all the things that got me to this dance go check it out what'd you think about this scene larry and um mike tomlin the head coach of the Pittsburgh Steelers <laughs> said Mike, he does not want to be compared to Omar Epps. He said it's offensive to put him in the same class as Omar Epps. That's what Mike Tomlin said. He really said yeah. that? He really said, he said Omar Epps is like up here, way up here. And he his star is never going to shine like Omar Epps. That's what Mike Tomlin said. Oh, wow. I don't, I don't know about that, actually. <laughs> I don't agree with that. World, he's he's very world. modest, but I don't agree. Yeah. We'll come to that world, later. Go ahead, Larry. Yeah. I mean, that's very complimentary of him to say. So, I mean, that was that was yeah. a class act to say something like that. So, um, it, this this is another one of those sort of ridiculous scenes. I thought that was just not well written, not well casted. You know, it's like here you are trying to be mm -hmm. inconspicuous and paying money to go get the, uh, you know, to get the scrubs and everything. And then you're going to go in there with these totally identifiable haircuts with the big high top fades and the steps and everything. Just make yourself as much of a, of a, of a, uh, you know, as a, as a standout as you possibly can. So you're going to go in this hospital with all these doctors and professionals and everybody else. And you're going to go there looking like you just walked off a, uh, you know, a stage like like Jay said, you know, dancing back up for father <laughs> cameo. and cameo, cameo, know, New Jack for cameo. It, it, and then at the same time, <laughs> you have these contradictions where it's like you have you have Marvin up there just spraying and praying everywhere, but then these dudes are gonna come through like they're gonna be all professional with their you know with their silencers and everything. It's just. I was like, whatever. This it, it just it got to the point of ridiculousness and absurdity. I was like, this is this is just dumb. Mm. I was just like that. I mean, it's like on some points they do good writing on this show. I don't like often the way they 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 portray us, 
but sometimes the writing is decent. And this was just like they gave the they gave the episode to an intern that was trying to prove himself or something. <laughs> no. Mm, mm, no. Mm, mm, mm. My man this- coming through tonight with them strong takes. <laughs> <laughs> by the way, Nita, Nita they miss base I, shots, but you yeah. ain't. <laughs> Nita, I'm not gonna keep putting all these complimentary um messages, so you're gonna have to start looking yourself. But this is like number 1500 right now, you know. Look, look, Thank you, you got a the on the way you Thank look, you, Eric. and your milkshake and your makeup and your door knocker earrings, you're going straight <laughs> nine. Oh, yeah, these are these are um for rock. Oh, door that's knocker. for my girl rock. Okay, and all think right. about it. <laughs> all right, well, there you go. And Nita, I'm coming to you next. Here we go. All right. White privilege at its best. Take away this scene right here where they was talking to Detective Burt. And now all of a sudden, the mama don't care if everybody know her daughter died of a, a drug overdose when initially she was trying to hide it. Now she's talking about she got powerful people in very high places. Mm-hmm. How the hell did they even find out that Burke intervened and saved Juke in the first place? Take it away. Right, right. That's what I was saying. I kept saying that something wasn't making sense or there's a deeper connection with this this family and the police and, you know, just in the ranks. Because all the while during this scene, I just kept seeing her husband trying to talk her down, even though that's what he normally does. That's what we've always seen her to stop, you know, you know, stop overreacting. But, you know, just in the the presence of the authorities you know you you i don't know i still think like he kept trying to pull her back he was like you know wait a minute you need to stop you need to stop pressing i'm like it's something like if somebody started digging into something is something gonna lead back to you and your family or something like that i was just like maybe something was going on there but i was she was on one she really was on one but I don't know. I, I still think it might be something in there. And like you said, how did she know that Burke intercept, intercepted with it? And mm-hmm. and maybe she was trying to follow up and make sure or press charges or something like that. I think that, you know, in that type of uh, manner, she figured out that, you know, she was released. And why was she released? And who said it? And like, you know how white women, white women and their tears will burn the world down. Child. Well, so, it's, yeah, it's not, I think she was just doing that. It's not only that, but the minute a decent-looking white blonde gets missing or gets abducted, Fox News plays the loop 24-7. I'm talking about Ooh. that girl that came up missing right now. Yep. You got an Amber Alert on your phone? <laughs> no, I don't. You uh, talking about the chick from Long Island, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. This past week, it they found her on my phone. Oh, they did? Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Jump in there, J-Mo. Yeah, I mean, I can definitely see dude finally tired of her ass, man. He's like, man, when you shut up, you're making it worse. Like, you, I mean, he probably de- he tired of her ass digging in. He could see Jukebox loved her, their daughter, and it's hurting just like they is and didn't have anything to do with it like they saying. And she not trying to hear it. She's on that old black person ruined my life and my child's life, mm-hmm. you know, tip. And I think the reason she knew that she wasn't there is because she probably came to press charges mm. and, and jukebox wasn't there. And mm-hmm. she like, what the hell? Exactly. I want to put her under the jail. Where's she at? They like, well, we had let her go. Why you do that? She's a monster. She's repellent. Where's the raid? <laughs> so, mm-hmm. I mean, she didn't took it to a whole nother level. She thinks that putting jukebox in jail or blaming her will you know in some way make her feel better for what happened with her daughter and like he said this ain't gonna bring the daughter back you need to stop you're making it worse because you you won't let us i mean you can't really move on from losing your child but you're not allowing it to heal that you're not allowing them to heal and move on because you keep poking at it, poking at it, you know what I mean? She gonna let it unravel her. I mean, even more unravel. So, I mean, she already unraveling like a 70s uh, wool sweater, so 
You know what I mean? Uh, that like she got on in that picture. It's already probably unraveling ra- around the uh, wrist. So I mean, she falling apart. She can't handle it. And in her mind, she feel like you know burying jukebox under the jail will make things better. And she, you know, she ain't on the same level as the pops. But the pops should have told her to shut the hell up. Before the daughter died, a long time ago, he should have stopped coming in late and letting her ruin every damn thing. Maybe mm-hmm. she wouldn't have been on that ready rock. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Try to get on that butter. Big Larry. <laughs> you 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 have a Larry, you have a unique perspective on this. You've actually had people in your family in the police, and I'm sure they tell you story. Break this down for us. Well, I just I, I want to first say that I know people are, are saying that that this is the original Karen and they're making it a, a, a racial <laughs> thing. And I think what this woman is suffering is grief. I'm not going to say that she's not a racist. I'm not saying that at all. But I think what her behavior is is a result of is her grief. It has nothing to do with race in this particular matter, because I think if it had been something else, somebody else, she would have blamed whatever that other thing was. I think she's grieving because she lost her daughter. And let's not forget, sitting right across the desk from her is another white woman that let Jukebox go. So, I mean, we, we're, seeing, we're seeing here you have just two different types of white people. You have one that's, that's you know, that seems to be more willing to try and understand what's happening with this young lady. And the other one that's just angry because she blames jukebox for her daughter's death really i think what she's doing is she's acting out her own her own sort of uh not just grief but her own personal blame she feels like it's her fault but she can't say that it's her fault you know she knows that if she would have treated her daughter better that her daughter probably would have never needed to turn to drugs but she didn't so not you know, only that, Larry, but you know, she also mad at the fact that her daughter was lesbian. That's really her biggest beef. It ain't she's not racist. Her biggest beef is that her daughter was a lesbian. And with a right. black, and with a black girl. if she would have if yeah. she would have accepted her daughter more and treated her daughter differently, she would have never have turned to the things that she did. But as we know, a lot of kids when they're when they're gay and they're not accepted in their families, they turn to drugs, they turn to alcohol, they turn to to violence, they turn to all kinds of extreme things that are not healthy for them or the people around them because they're simply not accepted. Mm. Okay. Finish it off, Moochie. By the way, Nita, you looking so good, you making me money. I might have to keep you around, put you on <laughs> them streets a little more often. Big Buzz comes through with the 1406. He hey. normally do something a little lower than that need, but tonight, God Almighty, came through with a 14 I'm, I'm waiting to see them subscribers go up. Okay. <laughs> I heard the woman. She has a mission. She has a mission. She said, she said, telling y'all that if y'all want to see more of this look, get them numbers up, and y'all might get to see a whole lot more. Come on. <laughs> Jump on in there, Moochie. <laughs> I'm at the point on my like like yours next show. <laughs> <laughs> now I, I, do like <laughs> I do feel like she's a Karen. I do feel like she's a Karen. Um, Nicole's mother. I feel like she mm-hmm. she's saying racial things like it's under the radar racism. That's what I'll say. Like the ghetto comments, mm-hmm. and she got this from the ghetto. And but, she gave it to her. And he was like, we don't know that. Right. <laughs> Your husband's like, we don't know that. Right. And she's never used drugs before. She turned my daughter on to drugs. You don't know, that, don't either. know that either. <laughs> In a way, that's so so Yo, I was glad that the father was supporting her because the father really yeah. feels bad for Jukebox 2. Hmm. He see he really he I think he believes that his I think he might have saw more too. He might have caught his daughter doing stuff in the house before and she had and he, they kept it between each other. I'll go there. That uh, happens a lot in parents. Yeah. Where you like, look, we're gonna just keep this between me and you. Your mother don't need to know about this because she'll have a, a heart attack over this. You know, or I, something I, like that. I right. know I know a parent group right now that's got that going on. I keep trying to advise one of the parents. You need to sit down with your spouse and let them know what's going on um, because you don't want the other parent to find this stuff out and then yeah, it just great. be a gut punch. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Find mm-hmm. a way to sit down, talk about it, and um, try to get on one accord. So, 
we'll leave it with that. And um, so on you, J-Mo. So after that meeting, Burke and Jukebox meet up. And she's basically just icing this cake again, J-Mo. <laughs> and she finally gets Juke to open up to her and say, look, I'm going to take you for some shaved ice. And I was sitting here thinking to myself, damn it, I would have went too because I love me some shaved ice and ices. I would have went. That's all. She could have opened up the whole thing with that with me, and I would have been like, let's go, honey. So, right. You saw like the first 48, you just bring you some shaved ice, and you ready, huh? I'm boy. I'm, if it's my cheat day, I'm ready for that shaved ice, man. And um, what's that stuff? The real Italian um shaved ice. ice. Stomach? Oh, yeah. Take it away, J-Mo. Yeah, yeah. Hey, man, I, I have to give y'all credit. Y'all was right that, uh, that, that she was a vegetarian. I didn't peep that at first. I thought she was just trying to be a tough cop. I still don't think she want to, you know, clam jam with jukebox, but, you know. Not yet. Not, not yet. yet. Maybe she grooming her, you know. She <laughs> Definitely like, hey. she grooming her. That's for sure. Right. Maybe. And maybe she'll be the influence that made her be a cop. Is looking that way, um, so we'll see what happens with that. Um, but um, I don't know. She she pushed a little too hard. You got to be gentle. And mm. uh, <laughs> jukebox mm. is tough, but mm. she started pressing too hard, and jukebox ended up clamming up, pun intended. And uh, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> stop stop giving off info. So we'll see. Because we see, you know, later that she warmed up a little bit. And when clams warm up, they open up. So we'll see. But then it was also some other stuff with that, too. So it was a little setup. Okay. But, uh, you know, I think that they'll be cool. Um, she may be mad with her, you know, in the future. But she ain't going to do nothing too heavy on, on Jukebox. I think she she like her. Not necessarily relationship wise, but I think she see you know that she a good person inside. She did see them at the bus stop the last episode, like a cute little couple and friends and hugging, and it was innocent. It wasn't like they was drugged out or you know nothing uh, nefarious going on. So I don't well, they know. Did I think at that bus stop. Yeah, but I'm saying like she she see that as like little puppy love probably type stuff. Remember she was saying she had her first little girlfriend that she used to love when she was at the uh, cemetery. Somehow cops and, and lawyers always find somebody at a cemetery on these shows. I don't know how. <laughs> first three. <laughs> They're very convenient. Yeah. yeah, just conveniently. You know, where would a teenager go? J-Mo, J-Mo, stop giving away video material that you can make your damn self. Because you know you got eyes up here, brother. We got mice in the corner just picking up everything and then going to their channels making little videos. Right. Keep some of it to yourself. Make a video on it and then let everybody else run with it. But you get your video out there first, my brother. (laughs) Coming to you, Larry. But before I do, Larry, let me acknowledge the Super Chat, Nita. Your milkshake bring all the boys to the look. These I ain't never seen pockets <laughs> empty like this before. Need I mean I feel like we at church or some pockets is getting empty. We gonna have to call this a tank. When we get off, you're gonna have to give me your cash app again because uh, I mean you making it rain up in this joint. <laughs> yeah. Be more careful. Jump Mookie on in there, man. Turn next. <laughs> right, Luigi, you next. Go ahead. And so they already uh, said uh, I was topless uh, a couple of weeks ago. And you was. <laughs> and, and you was. Let's make them <laughs> dreams come true, then, girl. We gonna show them. Right. Jump on in there, Larry. <laughs> I feel like you might need to get rid of these name bubbles. You know, the they're, just, they're, they're blocking everything. Blocking. <laughs> That's right. That's right. You just put an arrow or up arrow. But, but Larry, this this is what she's doing. That's a tease, Larry. If you want, the, you want the stuff to become higher, you got super chat. That's got it. Super chat. <laughs> super chat. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, you know, I was. I'll be honest with you. I was happy that Bert came to her. I was a little disappointed in Jukebox at the end of this whole thing because I felt like Bert came to her like on the real tip and she just played her. And I didn't like that. I mean, I, I understand that she's that she's 
in the game and she's trying to hustle. But I just feel like at some point you have to let people be real with you. And she just, I think she just, I think she's, that's going to mess her up forever. I feel like she came for, she came with her on the real tip. And I think she, and she threw that aside. And even though Burke may never know, mm -hmm. I think jukebox is always going to know. And it's always going to mess with her. But, um, I mean, it was all right. It was a cool scene. We all knew what it was. We all knew what it was. We knew that we knew that Burke was a you know was was a lesbian a while back. So it you know it's just it was nice they kind of finally had the talk and we kind of got you know jukebox. I think at some point will actually be able to have someone that she can reach out to because, I mean, obviously her first girlfriend's dead. She's never gonna have that kind of conversation with Kanan or, or her dad. Even though I think Rock knows Rock is never going to be that person for her. She may be able to have some some mild conversations with her, some generalized conversations about love and stuff. But she's never really going to be able to have a conversation about that. So, OK. All right. Good one, Larry. Um, just my opinion reviews. B. Avery coming through with a twenty dollar super chat. And I know why he came. So I'm going to give him his video. He wants a little more than just Nita. My man said he wants a little more than the eye candy. So I'm going to give him something funny to look at. I'm going to give him his remix. What a money reside. What a money reside. What a money reside. What a money reside. Okay. Baby, let me tell you something. If a whore ain't paying y'all bills, that's the last thing y'all should be worried about. <laughs> that's almost like as bad as some of my uh, face swaps right there. <laughs> I, just, I hope that. I hope Brandon didn't pass up Nita for that. No. no, 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 no. He didn't pass her up. He just wanted a little more. That's all I'm saying. He didn't pass her up. Okay. He a little more. That's all. I feel like um, Nita might need to make you a video meme. <laughs> hey, you know what? I, I might need to screen record right now and turn Nita into the next video I show people. That's what I'm Oh, my do. goodness. Cut it out. Go ahead, Moochie. Somebody made well, a meme for me the other day. You know, when, some, when they usually following leaves they do go to the cemetery but that's only with murders so mm. with 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 this whole thing she's just following her period mm -hmm. right I think she's just following her yeah. and she's trying to she's doing her she's, she's being a detective she's doing her detective work she's trying to get it in with this <laughs> with, with um jukebox and she's trying to befriend her in a way but it's not really working you threw me off when you said she following her period. I'm like, I don't know why here you go. She can do that. Oh, 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 oh I got yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, Whoa, she really is a good detective. Yeah. Well, she's she's oh, following her. She's she's trying to befriend her. She's trying to act like she's helping her out. But once she mentions Kanan and he and he has something to do with it, you know she gonna rock with her family. She's she's not giving her family up. Right. Yeah. She's loyal. All right, Nita, you get to finish it off. <laughs> she was doing good. She was doing so good. And then she just kind of had diarrhea of the mouth. Like she started bam, bam, bam with the questions back to back. I was like, oh, girl, can we pace it out a little bit? I mean, I understand it's an investigation. But yeah, back in the day, all they did was follow people. And I, I mean, telling people, following people, looking, spying, just watching people. That's how they got most of their intel and stuff like that. And I think that um, with her getting that little in about um, her sexuality, she was able to come at her at a different angle. But then she just kind of had diarrhea of the mouth and she blew it because as soon as, you know, um, Juke caught on to it, she was she closed up like a like it was just gone. Like she, like, she hey. felt like a Sunday lawn chair. That shit was <laughs> mm -hmm. right. I was just like, oh well. She clammed up. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. Well, uh, <laughs> I still think she's gonna use her though. She they are gonna be using each other exactly in their, in their own ways or whatever. Mm -hmm. And we'll see where it goes. But I think that the, the relationship, the bond is a little bit there. I wouldn't call it a bond, but there's something there. That was and, a spark. That was yeah, a spark. and they're yeah. going to work that from their angles. But what they're going to do is use each other, just like you said. This is going to it's going to be a relationship of convenience until something happens that makes them actually be like, you know what? We friends. We, we did. We do have something for each other. 
maybe we need to go that route, but we'll see when it goes. All right. But you um, know, go ahead, Larry. I was gonna say, you know that that Burke has been straight up with Jukebox. She's told her, like, yeah, I'm I'm police. I'm gonna ask you these questions because I'm police. This is what I do. She hasn't been trying to like. It's not like she's trying to 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 be slick and say, hey, I'm trying to befriend you just so I can just so I can get next to you and then ask you all kinds of questions. She was like, she told her straight up, like, if you want to talk about this stuff, this other part of your life being being a lesbian. I'm here for it because this is me too, but I'm also police. And so I'm going to ask the questions that I have to ask. She has been 100 with this young woman. And so it's not like she's just trying to use her or play juke or anything. She has been straight up with her. Hmm. And I, I respect that. Okay, cool. All right, uh, Moochie, I'm coming your way now. <laughs> okay. Talk to me about this scene right here. Which we knew was going to happen. We we all predicted this last week. That I feel like two, this scene needed to happen. They was going to get back together. Sure. She's basically at, upset with him a little bit because you went to do a job. You ain't get the job done. You F up. But at the end of the day, you know, they had their little talk, squashed some things, and now they back on they back on even footing. And Marvin just basically said, you know what? Yeah, Rock, you smarter than me, blah, 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 but I'm still a man. Give me my space to speak. Speak on it, Moochie. Well, he told her that how he shot, he killed little Rob. And also that he attacked Unique and his car is bulletproof. And then the key thing to this is you're messing up what I have already set in motion. Okay. So this all ties in with all of the things. <clears throat> She's manipulating more than one person in this too. Mm -hmm. But I'll I'll get to that later. Okay. Now with this, we got a little backstory that their parents weren't really parents. Mm -hmm. They weren't nurturing parents. To me, I feel like they might have gotten a drug game because it was stuff like that in the house. Mm -hmm. And now her mother, I don't want to. I'll get to that later, and I'm I'm gonna skip over that right now. We see that Marvin actually raised. Raised Rock and, and um Lulu. Mm -hmm. So this is a lot for, for us to take in right now. And then being that he messed up and she took charge, he did speak his piece. He said, you make me feel less of a man, but you are a better boss than I am. So he owned up to it. Mm -hmm. Thank goodness. Okay. I know. Uh, well, it's on you now, um, Nita. Speak on it. Oh, okay. So, yeah, with this, um, I agree 100% with Moochie, but you know what it reminded me of? Mm -hmm. It reminded me when she said, you're messing up things that already got in motion. The same exact thing that started this whole thing off with Kanan killing Buck 20 and like for them corners, and he didn't know nothing about nothing. And it's, a, it's the same exact thing. And that's why I always say it's the blind leading the dumb. Because time after time after time, again, you just make the same old mistakes. Like, I really don't see any growth. I don't see you learning from nothing. I don't see you making better choices. I don't, I don't see none of that. I'd be like, come on, Marvin. And so, yeah, I like more of the backstory. That was good. But um, Rock basically pulled him back in because when he said when he said I don't work for you, I said, uh oh. So she had to pull him back in because you gotta be able to pull in the reins. You have to be able to keep him close because you know he's one of those reckless, you just don't know what he gonna do. So it's just best to, you know, they say keep your enemies close and whatever. You know that old saying, but I just think she really pulled him back in just for that. And then I also thought that she was planning a hit on Marvin, but now it doesn't seem like that. I, in this conversation, I, I didn't get that from that. So I, I guess I can take that back. Okay. All right, Jay, Mo, I'm with you. I, I never got that vibe anyway. Neither did uh, I. There, there, was, there was full videos made that a conspiracy rock was going to take out Marvin. I never got that vibe. I never got yeah, that vibe. I, the only reason why is because of the batter up and mm -hmm. she was sending um, she was sending 
Marvin Lulu. over to Lulu's house. And so that's where I got that from. So okay. I, I didn't get it from that because Lulu took the jacket. So Lulu, well, I'll get to it when we get to the end. I'm not going to run. Go ahead. All right. Jump in there, J-Mo. Um, I mean, that was pretty good to see, you know, a little bonding right there. Um, one of the things that uh, I liked on this is he said, uh, with you in the church asking for, for forgiveness, she like, no, I'm not asking for forgiveness for what I did. It's for what I'm going to do. And that's <laughs> basically, I tried to be my New York accent right there for rock. That's what I'm going to do. But uh, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. She's like, man, F all of this. Ain't no more, you know what I'm saying, rules to the game. I'm taking everybody out. I'm about to make him take out the pappy. I'm about to have Unique gone. I'm about to sit on top the queen pin at any means necessary. And, uh, you know, she didn't let it all out right there. But, you know, basically that's what she's thinking and trying to do. Um, mm -hmm. But like we've heard and like we'll probably see if it does work out that way is it's lonely at the top and uh what did it cost her it's gonna cost her her relationship with her brother he he gonna be upset both of them you know if canaan find out all the stuff she didn't did and manipulated him cause of that she gonna not be able to trust she probably sent phony gonna be gone mm. and, uh, and uh you know she her mama, we already saw that. We'll get to that. So, I mean, who's she going to be with? Can't trust nobody, this, that, and the other, but she don't care. She, like, ready to go all out. So, it's ugly. It's messed up. It ain't, you know, pretty at all. But that's why most people don't get in this game. And if anybody... Most people that haven't been in this game or know about it will say, man, they took the easy way out selling drugs. Heck no. You got to worry about cops. You got to worry about robbers. You got to worry about getting killed. There's so much you got to worry about. You got to manage your money. You got to worry about the people you're dealing with. They oh, might want to do things just so much. And you don't get a day off. You don't get paid vacation, holiday right. pay. Oh, so, no. you know what I mean, all of this stuff is just so much. Um your only retirement plan normally is uh, in prison. If, if you, you know, don't get killed. I was about it to is say. people yeah. that live and make it, but that's a very, very small few yep. that make it to that level and do it. You could be a corner person and quit and make it, but you ain't really, you got to find a job still. <laughs> you ain't going to live forever off that corner boy money. So mm -hmm. it's a hard yeah. life, man. They got to go through a lot. It's ugly. Uh, finish it up, Larry. Talk about this this brother sister scene. Yeah, first of all, they probably need to have a priest come back through there and reconsecrate that chapel because they should have both have burnt just burst in the flames when they stepped across there. You know, <laughs> reach upon it, reach upon They should have both just as soon as they crossed that threshold, they both should have been in flames. But you know, I mean, I just. I guess maybe they were trying to make us feel some level of sympathy for that they have been raised in, in through hard times. We all already recognize that they have been raised in a in a hard, difficult time. But it's just like with Rock when she talked to her, you said it was okay to jump around, right? Yeah, you can jump around. So like when Rock talked to her mom and Rock was up there because she doesn't want to take responsibility for anything. It was like she went up there almost like she was trying to blame her mom. And mom was like, don't try and put that shit on me. She was like, you wanted what you wanted. You want to live the life you want to live, and so you're living it. Don't try and put that. In. She was like, that's all you, you know? And that's really what it is. I mean, Rock, Rock is a, I mean, he keeps on saying, like Marvin says, that Rock, that Rock is a better leader. Rock is a horrible leader. Look at their organization. They are in complete disarray. Complete. You have one kid that's your son that doesn't obey anything. You have another one that you had to put up out the organization. You have another one that got burnt up because you had him up there with no security at his house, knowing good and well that there was going to be a hit coming because he had a failed hit on the other hitter who knew who he was now, and you didn't even bother to put anybody on his house to watch him. She's a horrible, horrible, horrific boss. If she was a CEO of a company, the company would have been bankrupt. It would have been horrible. 
Mm. She's a I garbage, wonder, but, I wonder garbage what, but, what he's saying about that, though. You can when he's dead. Everything again. happened because he d- double. She d- had to double back because of what Kanan did. Right. Poor leadership. She, if, if like, like I said, she had to double back because of what Kanan did. <coughs> she, they, she had everything set in motion. Lulu got the jacket. If, if she didn't have to go back and talk to and chastise Kanan. Everything probably would have went through. You got to think about you her organization as a family. Hold, hold I feel on, like they don't respect her, uh, hold, don't respect on, her authority. And, and Jay, let Larry rebuttal to Mucci. I just want to say one part. She can't fire her son. She could. Yeah, but she could. She could have her, her they uncles beat their ass so he stop do, making moves like that. Yeah, go ahead. Let me ask you this. Down. How many how many times have we seen Unique's people have to go back? How many times have we seen Unique have to go and clean up messes from his boys? None, because they do what the hell he tells them to do the way he tells them to do it because he has good leadership. Rock one, sucks one, at her job. One, Rock should he, not be doing he, her he job. Got he, he, he got his soldier. Yes, yes, you got about the soldier. Go ahead, let me, yes, let me know hold when you're on. done so I can keep going. Hold on. Go ahead. Make him finish his point. Go ahead, Larry. So even if Unique was bad at his job, it doesn't mean that Rock is any better at hers. She's still terrible at her job. Like, as, even if Marvin is bad at his job, she's still horrible at hers. It just means he went from a bad leader to another bad leader. That's it. She should not be in the game. Either that or she should go work with Unique or somebody else go work with what's the other dude that told her he couldn't do it or anything. She needs to go work with somebody else and learn how to run an organization because right now her stuff is a complete and utter disarray. Okay. Now, who would like to rebuttal that before we move on? Oh, I was saying he did get at um, at one of his soldiers when he messed up. Okay. When when the whole re, when the whole re up got snatched by the cops and, and they rolled on him, he had to so, get on Cracula. Yeah, so he got on him. So the only thing with this, as far as with Rock, they they keep trying to do little things on their own. Talking about Marvin, Kanan, all of that. They they doing stuff on their own without even telling her things, and she's already setting stuff in motion. Jump right. in there, Nita. My thing is, is with um, when Larry brought up the mom, and we heard in the chapel that Marvin raised the kids. So can we say that they were raised in the streets? They were exposed to the streets. And Rock's mother said, "Your choices is on you." And that's the same way I think that uh, Rock should be with Canaan. Your those are your choices. Those are your choices. The same way that mother said that the rock can be the same thing that we could say to Canaan. And so that's my thing about it. Like, yeah, you've been dealt a hand and the way you deal with it is the, is the outcome you're going to get. But the whole thing is Moochie is right. She's been cleaning up behind them over and over and over again. You will never know what kind of plan she have if they don't stop fucking them up. Like, I mean, but true, right. she's been doing that. But don't most people who are in this game, if you've got somebody you got to clean up behind over and over, you, you either kill them or you get rid of them. See, that's her problem, is her organization is family, it's family. so she Ship can't them kill them. Yeah, just you like Unique away. runs his organization with fear and he'll kill you, whereas she can't really do that to Lulu, Marvin, and her son. Now, Scrappy, he was scared when she rolled up. Uh, you know, he turned into Rough Rick because he sure wasn't slick <laughs> in what he was trying to do, but uh, they <laughs> they turned him into Rough Rick. But other than that, I mean, you know, we'll talk about it a little later. Maybe in that, I mean, I don't Lamont. Think of too much. Lamont, you run a business. Isn't one of the most important things of running a business is finding the right employees? And sometimes you cannot work with family because family is some is not the do not make the best employees because they will take advantage of your relationship. So That's you true. just can't do it. And if a rock is trying to run an organization properly, she needs to go ahead and get rid of the family. If the family's not going to follow the rules like she wants them to, then she needs to say, you can't do this. 
You can't be in the organization. If she wants to let if she wants to let Marvin out there running around shooting people up and he gets arrested and he goes back to jail, she doesn't have to worry about him anymore. She can go send him a couple hundred bucks a week on his books and be done with him. And that's it. You know, she did. but you need to she run did, your Larry. She was problem. about to fire Marvin with right. that hacksaw Jim I, Duggan. I was about to say, Larry, she was about to get rid of Marvin. She certainly was. She was trying to yeah. clean up the organization a little bit, but now everybody's right back in the stable. And at this point, she got to be able to trust. This is a, a different business, too. This takes a lot of trust, too, man. You got to trust people with murder with drug dealing, with not snitching, and she a woman, which in the drug game, and it's just not politically correct, if you're gay, you're a woman, you young, if you don't rule with an iron fist, they're going to perceive all of those things as weakness. Yep. If you're too old, they're going to perceive it as weakness. Hmm. I mean, it's all kind of stuff. You know, people think, man, he's too old, man. He don't know these streets no more. I'm going to take over. Or, man, she a woman. She can't do this. I'm going to take over. Or, man, they too young, man. They don't know the game like we do, man. I'm going to take over. Or, man, he gay. He ain't hard. I'm going to take over. Or there's, there's always somebody looking for an excuse to take over from you in this game. It's ugly. Mm -hmm. Dangerous. I mean, you bet. I, I know people in the comments have talking about people don't read self help books on the streets, and I don't understand this and that. I'm gonna say that's a bunch of hogwash because it doesn't matter if you're running an organization that sells drugs or you're running an organization that sells computer chips. You need good leadership, you need good employees, and I can tell you that even these drug dealers out there that are doing their thing. If you ask them, a lot of them have read, have read The Art of War because it is a time-tested book to teach you how to deal not only with your own organization, but with your adversaries. And if she's too, if she is too arrogant or ignorant to learn how to run an organization, then she should not be leading it. And right now, she's doing a terrible job. People can hate me for saying it and say that I'm hating on a woman. Someone said I had boss lady issues. I don't have any of that. I just don't. I just think she's running an organization terribly. That's all it is. Let me ask you this: You said Art of War. Isn't she trying to eliminate her enemy completely? Not in a smart way. She trying to get him locked up. Yeah, she's she not doing up, it in a smart way. Sweet. I okay. think I personally think it'd be better she just take him out. Because he I can, so too, he, he still can run stuff in jail yep. on the street. But I'll get to that in a minute. We'll come back to that in a minute. I agree uh, with that though, the, uh, Lamont, with you on that too, though. So Nita coming your way, and you know everybody trying to come to your yard today. <laughs> Teeth looking all cold gate. Let me get you in here. So. Juke comes to comes to rock. They have a powwow, and the gist of this meeting was: it's okay to have a police that you can use. That's basically the gist of it. Take it away, Nita. You know, I really like their relationship. The relationship between Rock and Juke seems very, um, you know, unforced. It, it feels very natural. It feels very trusting. Um, at this point, I, I think. Juke trusts her completely, mm -hmm. but this this whole thing, like I mean, I hope that because obviously we know that she had a conversation off script with her because of what she went to Detective Burke with later on in the episode. Right. So I'm hoping that oh, Rock, screen. Rock can um, you know pretty much trust her the same way that Juke trusts Rock. So I'm hoping that she, you know, she did, she laid down. She said, it's good to have cops, you know, and I love the questions that Rock always asks. And I remember talking to a lawyer and I was working in a law office and, you know, he would always say, why is, you have to think about why the person is asking the questions that they're asking, because there lie, there lies the true intention of it. And so I was like, oh, okay. So with that, I felt like when Rock is talking, she's telling telling um, Juke, and she is actually putting. She got to use her her. She got to use the people and put them on the chessboard. And so with that whole conversation, it just made me say, okay, Rock is about to really kind of use these kids because Lulu out of commission, 
Marvin is out of control. And so <laughs> we might have to put some other people in place and, and see where we're going. And I think because she knows that she's going to, she doesn't trust Howard and she may go the route that she's going, that she needed another end with the police. And so I think maybe we're going to try to use that as a another end into the police. So, yeah, I like that. I like that. Um, I like their chemistry together. And I like that. Um, Duke actually has that person because if she didn't have Rock, she wouldn't have anybody. Mm, okay. Yeah. Jump in there, J Mo. Okay, Nita, I'm with you. I'm, I'm with you. Come to the yard, people. <laughs> yeah, come correct though. Don't be trying to come in the backyard yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and she don't do no five dollars either. Don't think you're getting in that yard with five dollars and bringing a lawn chair. You want to go to that theater? <laughs> You got to have on a mask, and you got to come with more than ten dollars. Take it away, J-Mo. Step my game up, squeeze my little puppies together. Uh -uh. <laughs> 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 oh, uh, wear a tight little teeth. Now, uh, you know, hey, I will say this to Larry's point: her organization is like a small family business. She doesn't have many people to work with, like. You then went down the jukebox in a way in Canaan. You don't have any other soldiers? Like, that's one thing. Like, we saw a little scrappy. Uh, he gone just like the rapper. <laughs> His career was cut short. So, you know what I'm saying? Uh, where's all the soldiers, employees? You know what I'm saying? Like, where, where the swimming? Why we can't call them employees, Potter? Potter? <laughs> nobody say nothing other like you. She ain't got nothing other employees. <laughs> well, employee, well, employees, Potter. Uh, so, I mean, that was smart to, you know, put the bug in the cop's ear with jukebox. But why she don't have nobody else working with the, with the you know, organization? That's one thing I was kind of like, damn, where everybody at? Um, but, I mean, I guess, you know. She she got a corner store bodega. That's why she relate with Juliana so well. They both run little corner stores. She trying to expand and make it, you know, a, a Walmart, but she ain't there yet. Unique by being a young dude, he gonna hang with other young dudes that want money. So that's why he have a little, you know, crew. Plus they did say, and Moochie, you from the area. So didn't they say he brought hitters and people from other boroughs to come yeah. work. That, so. That's what he did. That's exactly what he did. And then you got to keep in mind, her supply was drying up and a lot of them jumped ship because they wasn't getting any money like that. Because Remember, he took their corners. That's true. He took their corners. The gas station, you know that that they had to close that up. Right. And she she's wasn't getting none of that money she, anyway. I exactly. Think. And she's still she trying to develop Baisley. He said he filtered it back in on Martin. Okay, I'm that. Okay. But she, she still didn't, um, you know, okay. that once Project. she doesn't have any supply coming in, a lot of people jump ship. And right. and Baisley is still not set up yet. Okay. And she still didn't get anything from Joaquin. So she's right. trying. She don't have no product. Yeah. No yeah. product, oh, no yeah. employees. There you go. So you know they don't get uh you, you know unemployment people, checks. Like her bodyguard is still there, and the other dude, but and and, and, and the dudes that Marvin had on the corner. So she, so she got some soldiers, but not as many as me. Right, right. So she's struggling. You know, yes. and, uh, you know, you got to look at it that way. I know it may seem like she a bad leader, and I'm not saying like she flawless. Nobody was flawless in their choices, but I look at it like this: she's more proactive. And Neek has been reactive. She tries to make the moves and he reacts to it, you know. And uh, if people, if she had more soldiers or if they listen to what she said, she would be good. But it don't go that way all the time. And so she trying her best. We'll see if it all play out in the end. But she needs some more employees. Bottom. Need the employees. Well, if you watch my trailer review, one of her most loyal is coming back. And having oh, said that, I kick it to you, Larry. Did you find oh. anything good in this scene right here? Um, well, I will say this. I think it was Nita or Mucci, one of them said it, that that um, that if she doesn't have, that if Juke didn't have uh, 
you know, rock, she wouldn't have anything. And I'm thinking she doesn't have anything because basically what rock did was she went there and saw this young girl in, in distress with her face lumped up and what she did see instead of, up yet. okay, well, she went to her in distress because she's suffering from the loss of her, of her, of her girlfriend and everything else. And what rock and what Raquel did was turn her into an accessory to murder of a cop. So mm -hmm. if you're asking if she has any, if she doesn't have her, what does she have? Well, she, if she has her, she has nothing because Raquel is just using her. She, she uses everybody else. She just used her. And I mean, people are, I mean, if, if we're talking about everybody who's using somebody, well, at least if you look on one end of the side, if you have Burke who's maybe trying to use her and you have Rock who's trying to use her, Burke may use her too, but Burke's using her is not going to get her in jail. You know, Raquel's using her is going to get her possibly in jail for the rest of her life. You, I mean, you start talking about killing cops. That's, that's death penalty stuff. You know, I mean, well, even in New York, maybe where you're on the death penalty, you're still talking about life and life without parole. I mean, right. and she's old enough that she can be convicted as she can be tried and convicted as an adult. I mean, she, I mean, she has nothing. If that, if, if rock is what she has, then she has nothing. Mm. Wow. Okay. Finish it off. Need, I mean, I'm uh, Excuse me. Finish it off. I feel like this scene, she manipulated both of these kids. She manipulated jukebox. Mm -hmm. Told her sometimes a, poli a police can be a friend, and I think she sent her to put that bug in Burke's ear mm -hmm. to let them know that. She and she's trying to set it up where maybe the police kill you mm. because he she's saying that you're gonna um the police are not safe. She told Burke that. And then she manipulated Canaan. But I, like I said, I will get to that later. I don't want to jump too far ahead. Okay. But she manipulated both of them. And it's, and it's, it's sometimes it, it's an ugly side of it. But she's in a man's game. She's in a man's business. So she's basically using what she can to, to get her results. Okay. She's desperate at this point, too. And most people, the stuff that let's be honest the most of the stuff that rock does men has have done time and time and time again and they don't get half the flack that she gets so it's just like you know i guess you you look to your women to be feminine and nurturing and all of these things so it's hard to see the tough exterior that she is presenting and right. really take it for face value but that's just what it is just like how Black people got to be 10 times better than white people. White people can be mediocre out here. And we got to be 10 times better just to get the same type of accolades. The same, it's the same plight of the, the woman in, in this, you know, in this business, rather. One of the Let things I uh, uh, have I Have I said throughout this show or the other shows that, that any of these people are less of a piece of shit because they are a male versus a female? They're all garbage. All of them. They're all a bunch of drug dealing murderers with zero redemptive qualities. And if they have them, they haven't displayed them to us. I did. I didn't even say you. That's what you said. I know, but I, I mentioned. I mentioned just before this. I had mentioned something <laughs> specifically about what you were commenting on. So I didn't know if you were referring to me or not. But I just wanted to make it clear. Hold on, Mooch. I just wanted to make it clear that if you were referring to me, that I that that I have equally, I I I say equally about men and women when they're when they're garbage or when they're good. You yeah, know? no, I got it. I get you. But I'm talk. I'm looking at the comments. I look at the stuff that's on my channel. I, I just I'm just reading the room, and I know how this works. Is as far as women and men in the game and how people look at each other and, and why somebody is so much worse off than the other person and all that stuff. So, oh, you know. We will say with rock oh. being pretty and feminine is another thing that would be perceived as a weakness in the game. Like if she was looking, you know, like a stud or a butch or a rough or like a killer, maybe people would look at it a little differently. But like mm. I was saying, if you're a woman or young or old or gay, all these are different reasons people may perceived weakness not saying it is that you weak but i'm just saying in the game you know it's always somebody got an eye on your spot 
man, this pretty bitch. That's what she know, you know, or whatever. So, yeah. Okay, J Mo, it's on you, brother. We got a scene right here where it fell through the roof between Detective Howard, Detective Burke. Basically, she done figured out he's trying to cover for somebody. And he gets so irate with her that he said he's going to go demand that she be switched. And she didn't seem like she was sweating it too much. Take it away, J-Mo. Yeah, he, he didn't have enough, uh, enough game right there. He should have came up with a better excuse then. If I can't trust you, you can't work with me. <laughs> okay, I work on my own without your ass. You ain't got much time, no way. So I'm about to be working without your pretty food anyway. But she don't know that. She don't know that. That man, that's written all over his face. I mean, oh, you can have to see the him. walking dead. Yeah, know, right? yeah, black walker, black white walker, black walker for this piece. Black mm. walker ass, you gone, man. Then take that hot ass coat off. Yeah, <laughs> wear the same uh, suit for you know weeks. Uh, but anyway, she like, man, get out of here. She already been getting cool with uh captain uh, that they got. So um, mm -hmm. it, it's pretty soon. She, she didn't, she could still investigate and do this. He, he should have came up with some better excuse. And then we know after he got his cherry pop, she going to be trying to you happen to my partner. Man, your partner. I, I don't know. She's going to be like that. J Mo. I don't think she's going to be like that. I mean, I think she's going to have more fuel to take down the Thomas family, but I don't think she's going to be sad that he got shot. I don't know. You saw, you did the, tra I didn't see your trailer breakdown, but in the trailer we saw she was, she was doing something to somebody. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll, we'll circle back to that. Yeah. Jump in there, Larry. What'd you think about this scene where the, the partners, Cagney and Lacey splitting up? Um, well, I'm, I'm going to get to that in just a moment. I did want to. I did want to mention one thing. Somebody had asked what I wanted to see when I, if I don't like these stories, and I just want to address that for a second. What I would like to see are stories that represent the better side of us. You know, these type of struggle stories are not the only stories out there. If you look at that, if you look at the movie that Will Smith did with his son, The Pursuit of Happiness, that happened during the same time frame as this. Except that man, instead of selling drugs, was sleeping in a, in, a, in a subway bathroom selling medical devices until he was able to hustle his way onto Wall Street and make hundreds of millions of dollars with his own, with his own investment fund. And so, yeah, I would, like, I would much oh, rather Mark see Hill. a series of that type of I – would, I, would, I would much rather see a story of, of – a series of those type of stories, even those show the struggles that we go through, except they show it in a much more positive light rather than this, just this because this is all we see is this type of garbage and we are more than this so one thing about that it does touch me a lot because i'm a single father raised my son it's been me and him against the world since he was 10 months old so that movie does kind of make me tear up but i ain't sleeping in no damn bathroom somebody something got to get where that I'm about to click clack something man hey yeah, but no, there's great black content out there. It's just the fact that people aren't supporting it. It's not drama filled enough. It doesn't feel like real life to some people. We have Queen Sugar. Ava DuVernay does amazing work on her own network. Um, we have Greenleaf. Uh, there is All American that comes on the CW. But I mean, we come here for, I don't know, maybe just the escapism of it all. Because I mean, I don't know. These shows are popular. People want to talk about them, and that's why we're here. But we're not saying that good black content isn't out there because it is. You know, showing something else, showing a different side. So yeah, what's the I escapism? Just, if everybody keeps talking about how real this is, and 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 this is the way it is in the streets, and you just don't understand. If this is so real, what's the escapism? It just seems like it's like you're just watching what happens in real life. I would much rather see. I mean, for me, escapism would be the idea that I can go and turn myself from a regular old salesperson into damn near a billionaire, you know, by hustling myself a job up on Wall Street. That's a far better escapism than the idea of having to worry about my brother getting burned down in his own house or shooting up little kids in their daddy's car. That stuff is garbage. I don't want to that. That's not any escapism I want to experience. 
I think we should all have broader horizons. I can escape watching Star Wars, Avengers. I like Pursuit of Happiness. I like this. I watch Billions. I watch Secession. I watch all kind of stuff. So right, like, why we can't us, watch this is what they give stuff. us. I mean, I got a cable. I got 200 channels to watch. I watch football, basketball. Like, I think people watch more than just one thing. I think it's in a way a narrow my way of thinking. Like, yeah, we watch all kinds of stuff. I agree. Yeah. I agree. But when it comes to our people, this is what they give us. This is what our own people are giving us. This type of garbage. I would rather see us. I'd rather have the stories about our people who are doing good, who are who overcome stuff and become successful. You know, I don't want to see that. Do. I don't want to see. I don't want to necessarily always want to see. Like some these stories are fine if there's some balance. The problem is right now there's very little balance. So many of the stories are about this type of stuff, and it's just like we are more than the street struggle. All right, look. How about this? Why don't we come together and make something and put it out there? That is a, that's a, that's an option. That is an yeah, option. Now, now give me the option of telling me what the hell you think. About here. <laughs> yeah, I, I think here. I I think here. You know, I think he just overplayed his hand. You know, I I think he tried to play that hand with her before when they were in the car and tried to be this whole thing. If I can't trust you or 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 you don't know what you're doing and whatever else. And I think when he tried to play that card again here, she just wasn't having it. She was like, nah, you're full of shit. I'm not having it. Mm. Mm -hmm. He just overplayed his hand. Yep. And Mucha, you get the round table this thing on up. All right. With this whole scene, I already said she going to go off on her own and find out her own things. And I was right about that. Only thing I wasn't right about was that I figured her her family would come into play and, and tell her how to navigate through this. And it could still happen. Mm -hmm. And as far as this, this might be a blessing in disguise for her to for her to end the partnership because now she's gonna be able to venture off on her own and get things done in her way. They're gonna give her a partner. They gonna <laughs> They gonna oh, give he, her a part. She might not be. He might. Now that this whole other thing happened at the end, she's gonna be by herself for a while anyway. Cause he's not. You know, we don't know the outcome of it. I don't think he's dead, but you know, we don't know the outcome of it. So she's gonna be over. She's gonna be by herself anyway for a while. Okay. All right. All right. And we did review a black show that was um. With the females, and you, you, you had negative things to say about that too, Larry. So I don't know. It's like it's no pleasing you. I mean, you run the world. You talk so bad about the girls. I mean, I don't know. It's no mean, you talk about this. He called, you, when you, you look called, at what the world they had made every single they was one of those professional. Characters. They were professional they women. Made, they had legal jobs. Okay. And you and you down talk that too. So and you know it's no pleasing you. I don't know. You don't like no. Tyler Perry. You won't watch that show. That's a black show. I mean, where, 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 can, where can we go? Hello. How you doing? Okay. Do? I'm just saying. I'm just asking. Are you? Is it cool to speak? I'm on mute. All right. So as far as run the world, I I went into that show thinking it's probably outside my demographic. I understand that it, that it looked like it was a show that was designed for young women, and but the, I watched it. And the thing is, is that show they took each and every one of those women that were young, beautiful, successful women, and turned them into complete selfish neurotics that no one could like, not even themselves. Their characters, their characters didn't even like themselves. And at the end of that show, you guys were even saying, oh, these women are crazy. This They have this fine-ass brother who's a doctor, and he has this other one who's a wonderful man, and they're faithful, and they can't get, they cannot figure out a way to not screw up their own relationships. So if you're talking about why I didn't like a show, because I think it's just basically showing that black people, no matter what we do and no matter what state we are, we are going to F up our own situation, our own lives, and screw each other over. I don't think you need that to have a good show with good drama, good comedy, and everything else. And the reason why I know that we don't need that, because we see it in other shows. We don't have to screw we don't have to screw each other. We don't have to make a show where we show this young, beautiful woman who's who's about to get married that has sex with some random dude called Community Peen. I mean, we don't need to demean him and call him Community Peen. 
I mean, there's a lot of things we don't need. We we can do better. Okay. All right. Well, we're okay. Moving, we're you. moving on on that one. I got you. And it is actually time for Larry to lead off again, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, and okay. this is going to be, this is a barn burner right here. So this is what we led off with. He finds out through a tape that was in Jukebox's drawer that she's got her little girlfriend, little white girlfriend. And it gets so bad, Juke spits on him. He pimp slaps Juke, chokes her out. And at the end, all of a sudden, then he wants to feel remorseful after he done slapped her, pimped her, choked her. But mind you, he did say some, they said some inflammatory stuff to each other through this whole scene. Mm -hmm. So Larry, take it away. I, I I don't even know where to begin to, to, to say how vulgar and repulsive and vile this scene is. I, I, I mean, in today's day and age, I can't even imagine that this would have gotten past the executives for this show. I can't imagine that they would have written this and they would have said, yeah, this was a good idea. Let's film a black dude choking his daughter out with her off the ground while he's basically squeezing the life out of her. I just, I just... I I don't I don't I don't have anything else. It was just so horrific and horrible. I just I think to myself, not only are the characters bad, the writers of this show should be absolutely ashamed of themselves. The executives that allowed this on TV should be absolutely ashamed of themselves. Everybody involved in the production of this scene should be ashamed of themselves. It was horrific. This is it was it was literally disgusting. It was so utterly it was she has it right. It was disappointing and disgusting. It wasn't disappointing in Mar, just in Marvin. It was disappointing in the people who actually created this. It was horrific. Okay. Moochie, jump on Ooh. in there. With this scene, I was mad at Marvin, but she did spit in his face. And I think he blacked out for a minute and when he did, you did see him crying at the end. You did see him crying at the end. I'm not saying he's right, Larry. I'm just telling, I'm just explaining it how I saw it in my eyes. And it was messed up what he did. It was and messed up what he did, right. but nobody talks about um jungle fever when the white father whooped her ass because she was dating a black man. He whooped her ass and threw her out the house. Anyway. That was 20, that was 30 years ago. And, and we had different about things. Exactly. This, this is, is the time that we're in. 1990. No, no. That film came out 30 years ago, and we had different attitudes about things then. And even then, people hey, were offended. I was offended. But people, but back then, we had very different attitudes than we do today. They show people Yeah, but what, 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 what they're TV trying to the show time. you is this is what happened in those times. You keep fast forwarding and bringing the, this time piece to the to today yeah we're in a whole another century <laughs> we're in a whole thank you <laughs> go ahead nita yeah i was oh it was heartbreaking it was really heartbreaking um yes she spit in his face but but i mean he was out of pocket he was totally out of line for talking about that girl he didn't even know that girl from jump you know, and it it was just it was it it was very disgusting. Just like with uh, I I agree with Larry with that. I don't agree with why didn't it why isn't it shown? Because people go through these traumas in real life, and it's a real depiction of how some people react to the 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 things that happen. You know, I, you know, I feel so bad for you. It was just, it was terrible. And then it was like, he was trying to snap himself out of it. And then he was like crying. And I was looking at him like, nigga, what? No. I was just like, no, it just, I, those tears fell on deaf ears and deaf eyes with me. I, it did not make me feel no different about what he did. What he did was totally disgusting. And yeah, it's just a sad reality of what people in the community face and, you know, at the hands of, and the whole thing is, is that what does it got to do with you? Like, I don't, I never understood why people's sexuality bothered anybody. Mm -hmm. They are doing that in the privacy of their own whatever. And mm -hmm. I don't understand why. Nita, you want me to tell you what it deals with? Religion what? and man-made quest to 
find a, uh, the ultimate, you can't argue against this point. And for most people, your religion is the point you don't oh, argue yes, against. That's right. That's so, right. Yeah. They brainwash you know, us with that. So Right. So go ahead, Larry. I just want to say quickly that there's a way to show real life on TV without turning it into trauma porn. And that's what this whole scene was. This scene was nothing more than just trauma porn. They didn't need to show all of the brutality to get their, to get the point across of what happened there. Okay. J-Mo, yeah. jump on in there. All right. First off, by what Larry was saying, whether it's music, a book, a uh, TV show, movie, it's all the same thing, the art of storytelling. Something human beings have been doing since it was oral tradition, okay? Some people are able to tell vivid stories. Some people are not telling vivid stories. Depends on the audience. That's why they have ratings, PG-13, R, whatever the case. When you are telling vivid, raw stories, then it's going to be uncut like that butter that Cana had. You see crackheads dying. You see people get shot. You see sex acts and things looking, you know, simulated as almost as real as can be. And you see raw scenes like this. Now, by me being an actor having a, the nail of my pinky toe dipped in the game, very little. Um, when you have a person that's a very good actor, they drive you to emotions. They make you hate them. They make you love them. They make you understand where they're coming from. They make you relate to it or they make you unrelate to it. It makes you think that's good acting. This right here was a powerful scene. It drive everyone to emotions one way or the other, whether you could put yourself in the situation of a parent and what would you do if your child spit in your face to being in the situation of jukebox and how would you feel if your loved one that you, your first love was dead and this is what happened and stomped out your stuff. You feel these emotions because they did a hell of a job. They did a great job. This is a situation I have never been in, thank God, either side, but I was able to develop empathy and understanding because they provided a great scene. They did a hell of a job. And so you have to appreciate the art form and understanding. We can relate to a lot of stuff in life and understand a lot of stuff because of acting. Are we going to be in Star Wars? No. But do I understand how Luke felt when he found out Darth Vader was his father? Yeah, you know, or the Avengers, or, you know, Pursuit of Happiness. Wait, wait. Darth Vader was Luke Skywalker's father? Spoiler I'm your father. Dude, I am the I did not know that. I don't watch Star Wars. I'm a nerd, but I don't watch Star Wars. Oh, uh, you for real? You didn't know this? I thought you was, was just playing around. Man, no, I could have sworn your never, ass was playing. I have never in my life sat through and watched any Star Wars anything. I played Come video on, games. Star Wars, the OG. Wow, you're missing out. The yeah, video game is dope. But I ain't never watched any Star Wars. Dude, they done made about so thirty. Got, that spitting is the ultimate of disrespect. Yeah, if my son and I love if, him if, if I respect in my father's face. Yeah, that's never crossed my mom. Yeah. My mom would have been in dumb. And my father never had, on my she head. just did. She did a delivery like, like, come on. Yeah, I don't know. I, mean, I would have probably lost it too if that was my kid. I definitely would have caught a slap or two. Um. And that's real life. I mean, I don't know. I grew up and I used to get whoopings and hit by my parents. Some people never got hit by their parents. Like, I got my ass beat. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Larry, did you ever get whoopings and get hit by your parents? I mean, maybe that's one thing. Maybe, I don't know. Everybody didn't have that experience. I did. I got whoopings from both my parents at different times. Now, was I beat? No, no, I messed up at school. I was bad doing certain things, and I got my ass whooped. That lets you know when you step out of line in life, 
there's consequences and punishment. You know, when you get older, nobody give you a whoop and they just throw your ass in jail or somebody gonna kick your ass or shoot you. Oh. Go ahead, Larry. Turn this up, Larry, then we're moving on. Somebody said they mom blacked their eye before. Damn. Damn. Two, two quick points. One, there is a big difference between getting a whooping and what Marvin did. That That is not a whooping, and we should not on That's any true. level equate that to a spanking or I anything. Didn't say that. That was, that she was, she, she was trying to fight him, patiently. too. Y'all let Larry yeah, I didn't say, waited. but, but I didn't waited. say that was equal to being a whooping. And That's my true. mom and dad were Let Larry have a point, Jay Moore. Let, let Larry Go have ahead. a point. Ahead, so man. I think we have to be careful about making sure that we that we're clear with that 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 we're not equating what Marvin did to a whooping or some other form of appropriate corporal punishment because that was not it. And as far as the artistic side of it is that you can you can write that story and such where Marvin says something to her or a number of things to to jukebox that cuts so deep that she feels the same amount of pain and trauma without actually having to see him throw her across the room and punch her and choke her out and brutalize this child this female child there's ways that you can write a story so that the person is hurt and experiences pain without having to put a, a, a young woman through that by her father. That is that is just wholly unacceptable. And there are some things, yes, that may be true from back in the day, but they don't need to be. They don't need to be, you know, exhibited on national TV in today in today's times. There's some things that don't need to be there. This is the thing you're skipping. She spit in his face. He slapped her. That would have been it. But she came at him like a man and tried to beat his ass. And yes, he overreacted. But if your child, you don't, I'm not saying a person need to have children to understand. But if your child comes at you to try to beat your ass, and if you're a gangster killer psychopath anyway, you're not going to handle it right. So you can't equate what happened here between them as a, what would happen in a regular household. But I bet you, after she spit in his face and he slapped her, if she would have left it alone, he wouldn't have put his hands on her. But she came, tried to hit him, beat him, do this. What he supposed to just take it? Now, if I was him, I would have probably restrained her. I wouldn't have to choke her out. But he lost it. He, he has a problem. And nobody here going to say Marvin doesn't have a problem. He's a murderer. He's a drug dealer. He's had uh, problems with drug abuse. So he's already a broken person. He, they already have a fractured relationship. And he didn't handle it appropriately. But if my son spit in my face, he's going to get a slap at least. You know, depending on his age, he might get stolen on or rolled on, one or the other, both. Also, that could have been some displaced anger too because he's been through a lot. Like the whole thing with Lou and trying to exact revenge on Unique and killing uh, Lil Rob and all of the heat that's coming down and then just to get that. And I, I felt like dealing with what he was dealing with, he should have gave um, Jukebox a pass for that. Like, I just, I don't even understand why he even concerned himself with that in that manner. Like, it just didn't make any sense to me. Well, you got to think back about how people perceive you know, the, yeah. the time of gay and lesbianism. So he probably wanted his daughter to get married, have grandkids, live a different life. And you <laughs> see, she doing, she didn't turn Lebanese on him. He didn't know he had no, him. He didn't even know what to say. <laughs> Lebanese, <laughs> what the heck? Yeah, that, that and that shows his ignorance. He don't even know the exactly. word, let exactly. alone how to handle it. Right. And that yeah. gives everybody some context in the thinking when they went through stuff. Damn, I thought I had it bad. Uh, you know, fortunately, it wasn't that bad. And if I have a child and this happens, maybe I won't handle it this way. I mean, through all of these things, you know, different mediums is how we look and perceive the world differently from 30 years ago. If these type of topics wasn't brought up and talked about and these stories weren't shared, people wouldn't come around to have a different view and understanding on what people go through, whether it's civil rights, gay and lesbian rights, uh, all kind of stuff. The police brutality, George Floyd. If that wasn't videoed and shared, 
then we wouldn't have the, the situation where around the world uh, Black Lives Matter coming together, you know, and people understanding. So with that video, that helped to show that story in, in raw realism. Sometimes I you think it has shown. Go ahead. I think it has everything to do with how the stories are told. I think what happens is with these stories with power is that they are glorifying it and and I think that's where the problem comes in. It's not just a matter of telling the stories. It's how the stories are told. It's the glorification of it. And they're making people believe that this is cool. This is what this is the, something to aspire to. And these are and I think that people that are young are very, very malleable and they're being influenced by these stories. And it's this is not the where this is not the direction I want to see our people go. This is the thing. Where do you get glorification from? Who said in the show that this was the you know how you handle it they're not glorification to me is making it sound that it's good or they're saying this is how you do it or they're supporting it they're just telling the story they're not glorifying it it's just being put out there in a raw and real way for a person to digest and understand and i think most people will, like I said, put themselves in those shoes and have a different understanding. Nobody is going to glorify it like, yeah, man, that's how you do it. Now, maybe after they got spit in the face, maybe some people with parents and with kids to say they would have probably slapped their kid or something after that. But nobody say, man, I'm going to choke them out and kill them. That's how you do it. Great job, stars. Nobody is glorifying it. I don't think that that's being a glorified, glorified uh, depiction of what happened. I think it's a raw and real depiction of what happened in that period, because this is a period piece. Uh, it's 1991, and it's showing a broken family, and they're dealing with a traumatic moment. He overreacted by breaking her stuff. It is his daughter and it is his house and she is only 16. So at the same time, he does have the right to go in there. She don't pay the bills and she, he brought her into the world. She didn't bring him into the world, but he did overreact. He didn't need to break the tape and tear up stuff and break up her room and tear it up like that. Um, but again, Marvin is a broken person. It's not like he's a college educated uh you know businessman i mean this dude got issues either way it's still no matter what we say it still don't make either one of their behaviors right no I matter agree. what their issues are no matter if they psychopath right you know you understand why they do it but it don't make it right so right I'm and they both overreacted because he shouldn't have did all of that he could have had the stuff and confronted her and asked her they could have yeah. talked about it she spit in his face he did. She did tell her that she was dead and he was, you know, rubbing in it in with a dead person like that would have been a clue to a cue to calm down. He didn't. And then after she spit in his face and he slapped her, you you're not so, like regardless of whether people want to believe in the Bible or this or not. It's an unwritten rule. You don't come and try to beat your parents ass like in these shows. They try to beat their parents. We just seen them try to shoot, kill their parents. In that episode, they had him kill his pappy. Uh, you know, I'm Canaan and, and what they have with you, uh, Tariq and all of this stuff, which is not a common occurrence. Don't get me wrong, but I never thought about beating up my mom or dad. Yeah. Even when they gave me whoopings and I was upset, not to say this is the same as a whooping. I may have been mad and don't want to talk to him for a couple of days or something, but, uh, in the end, you know, I wasn't going to beat him up, man. And, uh, you know, it's an unwritten rule and boundary, you know, and uh, it's just they they went out of control. But I don't see it as glorification, man. That's all. Well, when I, when he, here's the thing. When, I, when, when you start talking about glorification, the way that they film things, the music that they put behind things, they all are elements that tell that story. So when you're up there and you see Marvin up there with with his hero shot behind a burning house screaming, oh, in slow motion with the flames up there by like some hero shot, that's all glorification. When they show him and when they show him sitting on a on a on an apple box inside of a van with a lollipop in his mouth and a in a, a AK-47 with a drum with a drum canister on there. 
you know, shooting in slow motion with the bullets flying out in slow motion with the music playing behind them, you know, in such a way that's accentuating, accentuating all of this, that all is, is playing into the glorification of it. It's the same way that they show heroes. It's the same way they show the good guy in a movie when they're doing the same thing. And they're doing that because it's glorification of what he's doing. They're trying to say, look at Marvin. He's a great guy. He's out there defending his family. He's trying to avenge what happened to his brother. And and they're glorifying this horrific violence. So you think that scene was depicted the same way as the previous two? I don't see. I didn't see him in the hero shot when he was Neither fighting. Did I. Every scene is particular is, is, is uh, depicted in the same way. What I'm saying is the, those particular scenes that I just mentioned were very much depicted in a way that that portrayed him as a hero. Yeah, but we're talking about this scene, and you said it was being glorified. So I'm saying. They didn't do those same shots and they didn't have happy music or, you know, upbeat music with that. So that's no, what not I'm with the beating scene. I'm not I didn't say that they that they showed the beating scene and they're glorifying him in there. I'm just saying if for, when we talk about the beating scene, I'm saying that should have never have been shot. That scene should have never have been shot. They should have figured, the writers could have found a much more creative way for him to hurt her than to just sit like for instance, he could have seen she could have seen him with the tape in her hand, knowing this is the last thing that, that she can see her girlfriend with, that the last way he, she can actually see her girlfriend and her together. And he could have taken that tape and destroyed it in such a way in slow motion and broke it, tore it, took the tape out and stretched it out. He could have done what they could have done something like that would that would have caused her just as much pain and trauma without having to put hands on her, but they didn't because they went for the lazy, easy route, which is violence. Well, this is a violent family. They live a violent life, and, he, and what actually happened is what you said. He destroyed the tape, stomped on it, and what would her reaction be? She's violent, she's rough, she spit in his face. What would his reaction be as a violent, rough he, he dude? He charged him after that. Exactly. He slapped her. She charged him. Well, was he, you know, of course he didn't handle it right. Nobody, I'm not saying he handled it right. I'm not saying and glorifying that he did the right thing. I mean, maybe a slap, which is rough, but for one, nobody spits in nobody's face, especially not your child. And I wouldn't have, uh, choke my child out or tried to kill her or do all of that but he lost it he blacked out i'm not making an excuse we're that, seeing that what excuse. happened I blacked no, out that's excuse. what happened no that's what happened that's no. the story being told of what happened i'm not saying because he blacked out it's all good i'm not saying that we're just seeing what happened between those characters the emotions ran high it's a precautionary tale if anything on how not to go about a situation and how to keep your emotions in check. All right. Well, we're going to move because we're to the end. So, J-Mo, you going to keep this conversation going on your channel? Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll keep it going on the after on the after show, and uh, we got a couple more topics to go into, and maybe we'll bring up a couple of these some more. And, uh, you know, everybody definitely come through to uh, J-Mo Reviews. Name is in the picture. And, uh, you know, we're going to keep it going. Uh, everybody can come on through. Larry, Mooch, Nita. We keep it going. So appreciate thing, everybody for coming through. Yeah, great. Y'all are great. Y'all are fine, outstanding members of this community. You credit to the damn YouTube community. <laughs> Last thing we're going to cover, and I'm going to start with you, um, Nita, and we'll end with Moochie. Okay. Rock's plan comes to fruition. She gives him, she gives Canaan this long empowered speech about two to the heart, one to the head. You kill him dead. He shows up here to meet his daddy. And before his daddy could get a word out, he pulls out the gun. And I'm thinking to myself, the minute he pulled that gun out, he should have been running his fat lip. You going to shoot your daddy? I'm your daddy. But he ain't do that. Canaan shoots him twice. He shot him once. He went to the ground. Then as the show was going off, he shot him again. And by now, everybody done seen trailer review. We know he ain't dead. Moochie, finish it off. Uh, I thought Nita was going first. Oh, I'm sorry, Nita. I'm sorry. Nita, finish it off. 
Okay, yeah. yeah. With this, I think this was one of those backup plans. I don't, you know what? Actually, I don't because he, because you know what? Malcolm did say, if I see your brothers, I'm shooting first and asking questions later. So, yeah. Um, what's his name? Lulu got the jacket, but yeah, I think they did want to execute some kind of plan, but she had to go end up going with Kanan because Malcolm said, that was the only person that could get, you know, he was going to speak to. And right. so um, her giving that plan, it was, it's, it's, it's a little shaky there. Like, you know, like I said, she ended up having to put um, Juke on the chessboard. She had to put Kanan on the chessboard. She had to just kind of do what she could. And also too, Joaquin said, you remember he drew the guns on her about Howard. Yeah. So I think that's what that's when she realized that he he may be her biggest threat. And because, you know, he didn't want nothing. And I like the way she played it off. She played it off real good. But um yeah, I just think in the long run, I get like you said, he should have been saying, I'm your daddy instead of Rock trying to set you up or your mother doing he just went about it all wrong. And then, of course, Kanan the fuck up again. <laughs> she said two to the heart and one to the head. And we only heard it go off two times. And look what we got later on in the, the trailer for episode 10. But it was it was it was a bad look. It was it was a bad look. I don't care how you put it. It's, it's just a bad look to try to get to manipulate your child to kill his father. Um, and he not even know it. You know what I'm saying? It was just a bad look with that. So, mm. Mm. oh well, I don't know. We'll see. Oh, okay, all right, J Mo, jump on in there. Yeah, I mean, that's why you can't send a boy to do a man's job. Pretty. Oh, much. oh. They they got him over here. It was simple instructions: two to the chest, where his heart used to be, and one to the head. And this dude didn't follow instructions. And I was surprised Howard didn't just let it out. Hey, man, she's setting you up. I'm your daddy. Don't do it. <laughs> but Right. Yeah. I've been fast talking like a month. Right, right. <laughs> I've been like, you see that speed reading dude on, on Instagram, man. I've had it all spilling, though. But, uh, mm -hmm. you know, he picked up that he was wearing uh, that uh, unique jacket both, you know, puns intended. And, uh, you know, he ended up hesitating, man. He froze. But at the same time, he's 15 years old. Like, I was just looking at this like, man, Rock is evil. Part he said he was grown. Yeah. She was <laughs> That's Woo! what he said. She had this boy kill his own father without really even knowing it. And she would rather him believe that this gangster drug dealer is his father in prison than a cop. And damn, man, that was messed up that, mm. you know, she worried about street cred and a drug business over the well-being of her son. Like, this is storytelling is raw and gritty. I'm not glorifying any of this stuff. It makes me have, you know, like gratitude that I didn't have to go through a lot of this stuff like that. And, uh, you know, I just think that uh, it's just unfortunate. But people like interesting stories, drama, action, drama. because most people don't live in that way. So you want to see something different than what you go through every day. Or you want to see something that may bring a little memories back from back in the day. But you don't want to remember like if you had to kill your dad type stuff or nothing like that. But, you know, it's interesting storytelling, you know. Um, so it was interesting in that way. I enjoyed it. But at the same time, I thought that was messed up on how she did it. And, of course, like we were saying earlier, it's not that Rock is bad leadership in a way. It's that they don't do what they she tell them to do. They keep messing up. Um, so I know they tried to trick all the audience into thinking it was going to be unique. But 
that was too hard of a target and unique is too right. well defended so yeah, no. you know that's not even realistic that would have been totally unrealistic especially right. if you got away with it so you know it was interesting i, I liked it i love to hate it you know yeah <laughs> jump in there lair <laughs> This is this is another one of those examples where I say this is just terrible, lazy writing and storytelling. This is just another part of Powers' formulaic Shakespearean Oedipus complex, son killing the father type BS that we've seen before. It's just lazy and overdone, and it's just and on, and on top of that, it's just like we get to see how ho absolutely horrible. An individual rock is. There is nothing left about rock to potentially like. There's not uh, at this point. If rock got if rock got got hit by a bus, I don't think anybody would even shed a tear at all. It's. I mean, her existence at this point on the, in the universe is probably just. She, she, she probably just doesn't need to exist. She's she's a horrible human being. I don't believe in the death penalty, but she's making me reconsider it. I mean, the yeah. idea that she's going to send her own child out there to kill his own father, you know, you're going to send you're going to send your, your son, your only son yeah. to murder a cop, knowing good and well that if if he's ever found out, he's not going to jail. The cops are not going to let him go to jail. They're going to find him and kill him. And, and, and that's what she's willing to do. And, she, and the reason why she's willing to do it is because we're going back to the same place we've always been. She is a horribly insecure person who's too scared to own up to her own mistakes and her own actions. And so what does she do? She sends her son out there into harm's way to murder his own father and a police officer, knowing good and well that's going to put him and put his life at risk forever because she can't own up to her own to her own behaviors. I mean, she's she's not worried about she's not worried about anything else than knowing the streets knowing that she slept with a cop and basically that she let this cop in there and let him you know and basically he blew up their whole organization and they're all going to put it on her. Whether it's her fault or not, that's the way people are going to look at it is you were sleeping with this dude. This was your man's and them, and he took down your whole organization. And she's and, and so, I mean, it's all because she's afraid of what people are going to say and think about her. She's just, it's more of her own insecurity. It's just, and then to do that to her son, I mean, I, there's, there's no, it takes, I'll put it like this. It takes God for, it, it, that's God level forgiveness right there. I don't know, I don't, I don't know how you do it. That's mm. God level forgiveness because that what she did was horrible. Mm. Okay, and Mucha, you get last word. But before you go, we've got four hundred and seventy in the building. Can we get four hundred and seventy likes before we get out of here? And four hundred and new subscriptions to everybody's channel. All their links is in the video description. Auntie Mucha, take us home. <laughs> this is just why she was in that church before all of this happened. She yeah. knew what she was doing was devious she she basically like i said she manipulated juke and yep. she manipulated her own son she didn't tell him the truth nope when she said she was telling him the truth she never told kanan that detective howard is her fault his father they played a, he, that was a bunch of gobbledygook yep. and she he was he's so eager to get in the game that's how she manipulated him all right i'm gonna give you a shot now I'm gonna give you a shot, but you gotta do this. Yeah, that was dirty. You, you have to do this. And he still didn't carry out the task right. He shot mm -hmm. him in the shoulder, and we don't even know where the other shot went. And I wanna say he might have got out that I'm your I'm I'm your dad. Cause we still when it comes back on, it's gonna go back to that, I think. Yep. That's how it's gonna I also work. feel my prediction is. He's going to blame Unique because he still needs Kanan's marrow. He's going to go along with it, and Kanan's going to get away with it. That's He's, he's going to get away with it. He's going to use – they're going to say that it was Unique that shot him, and um, he's going to step to to rock again. Hmm. Okay. Well, wow. Short and sweet by the Auntie Moochie. Power's good about this 
slipping things in the corner and not letting you know what's really happening. Um, I just knew she was going to tell Kanan, but hey, she didn't. And Mucci, I guess what y'all saying is what Rock was doing was prepaid Bible and um, prayer services, what she was doing in that church. Yeah, she was, and she went to church for the alibi. alibi. Right. I, I, I mentioned that in my review. When she went to midnight. She went man. to the church. She actually spoke to her mother. So she has somebody that saw them talking. Her mm -hmm. her mother, even though she's going to say she's seen her talking to. So she wasn't there the whole time. So she calculated all of this. Right. Mm -hmm. wow. She calculated all of this. And I think it's going to come back to haunt her. Not now, but later. Yeah. Well, ladies That's and gentlemen. Wow. A couple seasons to come. What a Monday night, man. I'm glad I'm going to be in Vegas this week. Um, <laughs> be sure to subscribe to everybody's channel. Um, like their videos. Check them out. They all do very, very great work as individuals. But we do link up like Voltron to try to bring you guys a little bit more of that super friend feel. The party is going to be going on on Jay Moore's channel right now as we get out of here. And I literally mean in the next five minutes. Be sure to go check them out. And we'll be back tomorrow with a new panel. We'll discuss power and we'll give some predictions tomorrow. Till that next session. Hey, when you video. go to Vegas, don't bet on them dolphins. I ain't betting on no <laughs> I'm not I'm not betting on no Chicago City Bears either. Bet on the Bears. <laughs> y'all's record, record, record is what, J Mo? <laughs> one and one. Okay, same thing. One mine is. and one. <laughs> we having is. some fun. Same thing mine is. If y'all ever want to see a fish or a mammal that's a dolphin slap a bear in the face and get away with it, keep watching them dolphins this year. Might as well watch Star Wars if you are uh, thinking that's going to happen. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. We'll see y'all tomorrow, people. Peace. See y'all later. Peace.